Hi, this is James with Breads Electronics, breadselectronics.com, and this is a tutorial for HughesNet Satellite Internet. In this tutorial, we're going to go over um, how to configure your wireless router for your HughesNet modem. In a previous tutorial, we discussed with you how to get the hardware connected, uh, your wireless router, to your HughesNet modem. And this is going to, in this one, we're going to show you how to configure the wireless router for your HughesNet modem. Now, a lot of times inside of your wireless router uh, package, there'll, there'll be a, a CD-ROM disk in there. And that disk uh, will, will help you do exactly what I'm going to show you, um, show you to do here. However, that disk sometimes contains third-party software that runs on your computer whenever you start it up and it's it's what we call bloatware it's it's just something else that runs on your computer that is consuming resources so I would advise and unless there's no other way um, that you can get your your wireless router going I would advise you to uh, follow in the instructions here first and as a last resort run the disk alright so the first thing you're going to need is the IP address to your wireless router you don't need to really worry about what an IP address is right now um, you just need to know that you're going to need one in order to, to configure your wireless router there's a couple of different ways to define that. On our website, if you go to www.bradselectronics.com slash tutorials slash wireless.php, I've got a list right here of the most common routers that we see connected to HughesNet modems. And right here, as you can see, some of these routers have multiple IP addresses with them. Some of them have multiple usernames and passwords with them. The particular one we're going to be using is an Encore. And depending on what model Encore it is, you can see there's a 192.168.0.1 and then a 192.168.10.1. I'm going to show you how to narrow that down in case you do have a a, a router that has multiple IP addresses. So in order to do that, we're going to need to pull up the control panel. So if you go to your Windows Start button and Control Panel, we're going to go under the Network and Sharing Center. Now this is if you're using Windows Vista or Windows XP. If you're using, or I'm sorry, Windows Vista or Windows 7. If, if you're using Windows XP, it's going to be um, network connections. If you go in here, we're going to be looking at the local area connection. Now, if you're connected wireless to your router already, it's going to have wireless network connection. And I do recommend that anytime you make any changes to your router, you do it with an Ethernet cable connected to your laptop. If, if you're only using a laptop, you, you're going to want to make those changes uh, directly connected to the router, not connected wirelessly. The reason for that is um, if, if you're connected, if you connect to the router and you, you connect without a password, without any security on the router, and as you're connected wireless, you put security on the on the router. Windows is going to have a hard time connecting back to that router because it's going to um, it's going to treat that router as as a different network. So sometimes that that can be a a, a headache. If we click on the local area connection here, it's going to show us this window, and we're going to click on details. Alright, 
what we are looking for is this default gateway here 192.168.10.1 and as you can see this is the same default gateway that is there so for this particular model under this particular brand of Encore router our IP address that we're going to use to configure the router with is 192.168.10.1 once we have the the IP address the next thing we're going to need is the username and password and as you can see in our case it's admin and admin now a couple of these have a couple of different username and passwords and you may have to use a combination of either of these. If we type in 192.168.10.1 it's going to ask us for that username and password. So we're going to do admin and add admin. And this is what what we call the <coughs> the wireless router interface. This is where you can configure anything that is available to configure on your wireless router. First thing I want to mention is as of right now I do have a HughesNet modem connected to this wireless router. And if you look right here you can see the default gateway is 192.168.0.1 now if you have a wireless router where that is the IP address of the router then that's what you're going to want to change first and where we're going to make that change is under LAN and what you're going to want to do if it says 192.168.0.1 you're just going to want to change that right here to something else 1.1 you could do 2.1 in this case it's 10.1 for the subnet mask you're going to want 255.255.255.0 so if you do need to change that you're going to want to change it to something else you're going to want to hit apply. The next thing we're going to want to look at is WAN. And what WAN is is the connection that is plugged into the WAN port or the internet port on the router. And for HughesNet, we're always going to want to make sure that the connection type is DHCP and for the WAN IP address we're also we're always going to want to obtain IP automatically if that's anything else change it to what you see on the screen and then hit apply the next thing we're going to want to do is click on the wireless tab and this is going to control all of the wireless functions on the router. First we're going to want to make sure that the wireless is enabled. The only reason why you would want to disable it is if you're going to connect two desktops uh, that are hardlined and you're not going to use a laptop wireless. The SSID we're going to want to make sure that that is something that is unique. Um, so if you have a couple of neighbors that are in close proximity that have wireless connections you're going to want to make sure that you choose something different than them so you know how to identify yours the SSID broadcast we're going to want it enabled and the channel we're going to want as automatic so we're going to make all of those settings and click apply and the last thing we're going to want to look at is the security tab. And this is where, if you want to set up a password for your wireless, this is where you're going to want to do that at. So, under security, we're going to want to make sure that enabled is checked. 
we're going to want WPA2 as the authentication type. Anything else, we're going to leave default. And under passphrase, that's the actual password. Now in there, you're not going to want to choose anything like password. You're going to want to make it something that's unique, something that is not easily guessed. And in most cases, um, the wireless router is going to require you to use six or eight characters for that password. And now at this point, we've configured pretty much everything that we need to in order for your HughesNet modem to, to work correctly. Um, the way that we can test to make sure that we are connected is to go back to the the interface and under the default gateway if we see 192.168.0.1 then we know we have a successful connection and we can actually type that into the address bar just like we can the IP address for the wireless router and it should pull up the the wire uh, the uh, interface for the HughesNet modem. Now, depending on what modem you have, yours may look a little different than mine. But as long as it says HughesNet, then it is successful. Now, once we've tested that, we can check your internet connection by going to www.bradsellectronics.com and if you see our website, then you have successfully set your wireless router up to work with your HughesNet modem. Now if you have any questions, you can go to our HughesNet tutorials. And at the bottom, we have a form that you can fill out and it'll send an email to me. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have.